Partnership Tax General Concepts Problem 6. Garlic, an individual, is a limited partner in the Onion Partnership. This year, Garlic's share of partnership ordinary income is $20,000 and she received a cash distribution of $30,000. Garlic's tax basis and her partnership interest at the beginning of the year was $50,000. Her marginal tax rate is 22%. Garlic qualifies for the QBI deduction without regard to any limits on this QBI deduction. Calculate the tax cost of Garlic's earnings this year. Compute Garlic's after-tax cash flow from her partnership activity, compute Garlic's tax basis and her partnership interest at year-end, and assume there's no change in Garlic's share of liabilities. All right, this problem, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's actually pretty simple. The key is that you just follow the order of the questions, okay? We just follow the order of the questions, go from top to bottom. So we start here, go down, and basically you're solving for all of these things as you go. So again, we've got an indiv individual limited partner, so we have a partnership, okay? First thing to understand, partnership. I mean, we're dealing with partnership general tax consequences, but if you're taking my class or another professor's class, you're going to have different types of entities throughout the the tax materials. Partnership S corporation makes a big difference. I've got a few problems that kind of stress the differences between S corporations and partnerships later on, but keep that in mind. So this year, garlic share, so I'm actually giving you the share, I'm not even making you calculate it, of ordinary income is $20,000. And garlic also receives a cash distribution of $30,000. Now the tax basis and her partnership interest at the beginning of the year was $50,000. Okay, all three of those numbers are really important. And then also the marginal tax rate is 22%. We're going to need that because it's going to ask us to, to calculate the tax cost of garlic's earnings. Now, because this is a partnership and not a C corporation, the qualified business income deduction is very important. Okay. Qualified business income deduction, as talked about in previous problems, relates to all entities where there's business activity other than C corporations. Well, we have a partnership here, so it applies. So to get the first question, to calculate the tax cost of garlic's earnings, we of course are going to use the partnership ordinary income. And the idea here is that the partnership, it does not report, it does not pay tax. It reports it on its form 1065. That's what a partnership uses, form 1065. Individual uses form 1040. The idea is that on the K-1, all of the share or each share of the items of the partnership's income, deduction, loss get allocated to the respective owners through the Schedule K-1. So I'm telling you that $20,000 amount is here. So that $20,000 of income is going to be subject to tax on um, garlic's tax return, on garlic's 1040, okay? So to ca first we need to calculate this one, calculate the tax cost, that's what we're going to do first, of garlic's earnings this year. So we start by taking the $20,000 that we're given, which is garlic share, I'm sorry, um, which is, yeah, garlic share of onion partnership. We start there. Okay, I was getting confused with garlic and onion there. You know, they kind of look alike, <laughs> so it gets a little, a little confusing. So we got $20,000 of ordinary income. We start there. And then we also are going to need to subtract away the portion of qualified business income deduction because the idea is that the question's asking the tax cost of garlic's earnings this year, okay? So basically, what is the tax effect of this $20,000? Now, because of qualified business income deduction, we also get to offset a certain amount. And the way we do that is, I tell you specifically in the problem to basically do not worry about any limits without regard to any limits, okay, on the QBI deduction. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about taxable income limits. Don't worry about other limits, wage, property limits. Don't wor worry about those. The main thing to worry about or main thing to focus on is the percentage. Remember, you take the business income, which here, the ordinary business income, you use the portion that's attributable to you. It's $20,000. So we take $20,000 again, and we're going to multiply that. The qualified business income deduction is always going to be, unless you're subject to limitation, but the max you can get is 20% times the QBI, the qualified business income. Okay, so we do that calculation right there. Okay, and then we put these in brackets and then we multiply by the tax rate, the marginal tax rate, which we're told is 22%. All right, so that's going to be $20,000 minus the QBI deduction because we get to offset a portion of that income. And $20,000 times 20%, that's going to be uh, $4,000. 
okay, $4,000. So basically it's $16,000 times 22%, and that's gonna equal, that's gonna equal $3,000 five hundred twenty dollars okay that's our first starting point three thousand five hundred twenty dollars that's our first place to start all right now that we have that amount that's honestly the hardest part here like, oh wow you know there's a lot of stuff here so that's what the first question is so number one what is the after what is i'm sorry what is the tax cost of garlic's earnings this year from the partnership it's three thousand five hundred twenty dollars that is the answer to number one so three thousand five hundred twenty dollars is the answer so now we go to the second question down. So again, going on down, right? Just go in order. Don't, don't rush anything. We go to compute garlic's after-tax cash flow from her partnership activity. Okay, so what that is, this, this question is meant to basically help you understand the distinction. So this one will be number two. I'll put number two here. And I'll put number two right here. This is making you understand the difference between allocation of items of income loss deduction versus distribution so in number one everything is basically on paper we basically allocate the items of income loss deduction credit to the to the partner like we did in number one but even though the person does not receive that amount of money so what i'm saying is ignore the distribution of thirty thousand dollars well garlic would still be subject to the same tax on number one regardless whether garlic receives any money the idea there is that this is one level of tax and it flows through to you to the owner at the it flows through to the owner every year at the allocated number. Now the distribution that's going to be the after tax cash flow meaning okay well if garlic is think about cash flow what is what is, what amount of cash is garlic getting from this activity. So what we're going to do there is we're going to take the cash distribution amount okay we're going to take the cash distribution amount which we know is $30,000 and we basically subtract the answer to number one, the number one tax amount because that's taxes that are actually gonna have to be paid on the tax return for the year. So the cash distribution this year is $30,000. So that's really simple, we just put $30,000. The number one tax amount that we calculate number one is $3,520 and that leads us to our answer for number two. So the number two answer is going to be um, if you calculate that, $26,480. $26,480 is the answer number two. Now we're not done. I know you're excited. You're like, wow, this is a lot easier than it seems. And you're right. It's not that bad. Now we still got to do number three. Number three. So now we go to number three. Okay. And we'll do number three down here. So again, the, the important thing to understand there is difference between allocation and distribution. Distribution is the actual amount of cash or property that a partner gets. Allocation is what basically is on paper. Okay. So number three says compute garlic's tax basis in her partnership interest at year end and assume there's no change in any liabilities because if there's a change in liabilities, that affects basis. Okay. If liabilities go up for the share for the um, partner, um, sorry, I said shareholder for the partner, then you increase the basis by the amount goes up. If they go down for the year from the beginning to the end, then you basically decrease the basis. So all we do here is we take the beginning balance, beginning basis balance. So this is just a formula. This one's just a formula. You take the beginning basis balance or amount, which we're told at the beginning of the year, the basis was $50,000. So we start there at $50,000. We then are going to adjust for any items of income, loss, deduction, gain that were allocated to the owner. So do we have any of that here? Yes. We had $20,000 of partnership ordinary income allocated. Okay. So the portion of allocated income, income for the year, we add that and that's going to be plus 20,000. Okay. Now a few things to note, notice that we do not adjust for the QBI deduction because that's only something that goes on garlic's 
1040. We do not adjust for that on the partner, at the partnership level or the partnership item. That has nothing to do with Garlic's partnership share basis. The basis component here is what um, allows for one level of tax, not double tax. So we have to keep this intact. The other item that you might notice is that we don't do anything with the tax effect from 3520 because again, that's outside of the partnership that's on Garlic's individual return. So then the last thing we do is we have to subtract away any cash distributions or any property distributions. So here we have a distribution amount that we're told in the problem we've been dealing with of $30,000. So we subtract away the $30,000 distribution amount. Okay. So we're going to get an ending basis number of $40,000. So the end basis at the end of the year equals $40,000. And that is the answer to number three. And we are done with this problem.